Okay, so what we're gonna do is start off first by deleting the default cubes by hitting X and we're gonna go Shift A, Mesh and Plane. We're gonna scale this plane up. This is gonna be our carpet. Now, the idea with this tutorial is to show you how to use procedural shaders to create something like carpet uh, in a really cool way that's a little different from using hair. There's a lot of tutorials out there how to use hair to infer to create a, a carpet, but we're gonna look at a procedural material approach to doing it. So I'm going to click new to create a new material here in my shader editor and uh, I'll come over to my material tab to make sure yep it's assigned here. I'm going to call this carpet. Now this is going to be a cool procedural carpet where you can make all kinds of crazy designs. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to switch over the render mode. Uh, we're going to go from Eevee though. We're going to look, look at this at, in cycles. So I'm going to click on cycles. I'm going to go ahead and turn on GPU compute to use my GPU and uh, I'll just leave all the default settings as is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to first put a modifier, this little wrench, uh, modifier of a subdivision surface modifier onto my surface. So I'm going to select the subdivision surface. I'm going to turn it to simple because I don't want it to round things out. And um, then we're going to create some extra features. We're going to add more functionality to this by coming over to our render tab and we're going to change the feature sets from supported to experimental. Now what this is going to do is we come back to our subdivision surface modifier. We're now going to have a few more options and this one right here, adaptive subdivision is the one we want. We're going to turn that on. This is a very cool system for basically creating subdivisions in an object based on uh, material inputs. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to come over here to the material and I'm going to open up this little hidden side menu section and I'm going to go down to options in settings and I'll just pull this out a little bit so you can see right here it says displacement bump only we're going to change this to displacement uh, we can do displacement and bump but I'm just going to do displacement only I'm not really going to use a bump and uh, with my principal BSDF I'm going to just drag this out create a little bit more room we've got this input here called displacement and we're going to use this to create the, the 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 follicles the fur of the carpet so I'm going to go shift a and I'm going to search for a magic texture and I will take this magic texture and I'm just going to drop it straight in uh, first actually it was going to color ramp and we'll grab this here we'll take the color we'll plug it into the factor and I'll just make a little bit more room here and I'll take my color and pop it into the displacement you can see immediately what's happening we're getting more geometry than what we originally had right so it's creating this geometry and it's it's subdividing it based on this material input and creating so this is physically moving the geometry up which is really cool you can also see it's shearing it off to the right and that's because what's going on here is we've got these colors r g and b and what this is doing is blender's translating those colors and it's looking at them in terms of x y and z space so the physical 3d world space that we've got here so we only want it to go up right which is the third coordinate so if you think x y and z it's moving on all of those right now in a value of one i just want it to move up so i just want to use the blue value so if i set red to zero and green to zero you'll see that it's just moving everything up which is cool now I can use this to determine the height of my carpet so I could click on this and I can bring down my value for brightness you can see it actually lowers the height of the carpet so I'm just going to pick a value around here then I'm going to come to my magic texture I'm going to take the scale up to something like 100 and I will take my distortion maybe up to seven just to distort it up and I'll take my depth up as well a couple of notches now what we're looking at now looks kind of messy right it's a sort of like gross uh you know field of of pointy geometry and what I can look over here is how much my viewport is representing the final product right it's going to be a little different so final scale is a render of one pixels and the viewport is going to be eight so basically what this means is the viewport is eight times less uh detailed than what the final render is going to be now I can take this up here to six it's the highest level of viewport uh, levels and this will make this even more detailed you can get closer and closer to seeing what it's going to look like but if I go over here I'll go uh, shift a let's create I've already got a camera I'll jump into my camera by hitting zero my number keypad and then I will go render image now you can see that with this rendered image we're actually getting tons of detail like look at this these are like crazy all the different strands that we have here way more than what we see here so this is an example of how it goes to even further detail when you render if you want to have a look at what this is going to look like in the rendered view you're going to have to move this dicing scale around a little bit so to make it smaller so if we want to look at this uh, final render of one we need to get the viewport to be one to see what it looks like when we do our final render so I could drop this down to like 0.1 for example uh, and it'll take me to 0.08 so 0.12 is roughly uh, similar so you can see a viewport of 0.96 almost a viewport of one and this is going to give me 
a, a visual representation of what would look like if I rendered with uh, one as the pixel value at final scale render. So if I drop this back up to one, this becomes one, this becomes eight, but now I know what this is gonna look like. It's a little confusing getting used to that. You can also just hit render and just take a look at the difference between the two, but um, anyways. What we're gonna do now is uh, let's get uh, let's get this looking a little bit better. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring mine down so it's not quite so tall. And that's pretty good. All right, what I'm gonna do now is come over here and get another magic texture. So I'll just type in magic and I'll plug the color straight into my base color. Now magic you can see creates really cool uh, images and effects. Um, I'll just bring the scale right down something like, like this. And then I might turn up my depth a little bit. And what I can even do here is grab a color ramp drop it here and pick some specific colors. So maybe a red and a blue. And then I can adjust these to get, you know, f harsher uh, fall offs between those. Now I'm gonna take my roughness and I'll bring it right up and I'll take my specular. I might bring my specular up as well. And now I've got a procedural system to create the look of the carpet, the actual texture. I can also just input an image into here and stick it into base color to get a certain image on my carpet. And if I want to take a look at what this looks like when it's all uh, final rendered, I could just come over here and go 0.125, I think will give me. Yeah, there you go, viewport setting is now one pixel. So this is what it'll look like if I set my dicing scale to one and I hit render, this is what it's gonna look like. Um, and you can see I get right in here and we've got all these little follicles of uh, what look like fur, but aren't, because it's all being generated just from a single shader node. Now, if we want to create a little bit of variation in this carpet, you know, so not every strand is the same height, what we can do is come over here and we want to affect this system here. So I'm just going to create a noise texture. And I'm going to take this color ramp and shift D to duplicate. I'll take this factor and plug it in there. And I'm going to take this blue value I'll just max it out and I'm going to get a mix RGB node. And I will put this right here and stick this here. And I'm going to set this to add. And now whenever I increase this, you'll see what happens is this carpet is physically lifted off the ground based on this noise pattern. So I can introduce just a subtle variation with this. Don't want it to be too tall. Don't want it to be like I've got, you know, this carpet laid out on rocky ground. You can also change the scale maybe to, I don't know. 25. I'll just bring my point light down so you can see I've added a sun lamp as well just to kind of fill out the light. But you can see how the shadowing and stuff we're getting from this looks really nice uh, and realistic. Now this effect of course doesn't hold up if you get right in close you're going to see this geometry. In that case you probably do want to use something like hair. But when it's when you're out far you're actually able to get a whole lot of visual fidelity out of an approach like this. And what's cool is we can use this on any kind of surface and just make instant carpet. So I can come over here and take my modifier and switch it over to Camel Clark, which will round it out. And now I've got a nice little circle carpet that I can put at the foot of my bed. Uh, I can change these values over here to have all kinds of different patterns on my carpet. You can get a lot of interesting uh, repeating patterns with the magic texture. So there you have it. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial on how to make instant procedural carpets in Blender 3.0. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave us a comment. Let us know what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, see you later.